the session is now being recorded. Okay. All right. I hope you can see my slide, uh, my uh, slides here. So the uh, Tech and Business Career Insider webinar series is a free monthly webinar series. It happens at 12 p.m. Pacific time on every Wednesday of the month. Uh, this is the opportunity where we hope to bring you as the audience and uh, a couple of uh, the industry leaders and experts into uh, a forum where they can share some of their insights. So these are for people in the industry who are you know, business leaders, business owners, hiring managers, which is what we did the last one. We had two recruiters and hiring managers um, uh, talking about hiring talent. And we'll, we're gonna be including other people as well, right? So not just in the roles I identified here. Um, the key thing here is to share with you invaluable industry and career insights so that uh, it helps you with your career, but also in your professional development, okay? Which is the emphasis of uh, Tomolo Institute, by the way. Um, I just wanna share with you a couple of uh, pieces of information here in, in terms of webinar. Um, the next upcoming uh, webinar will be around IT apprenticeships. Uh, this is something we're trying to develop in-house. Uh, we don't quite have those yet, even though Tambolo Institute uh, or Bellevue College became, uh, got approved for two new occupations with the Washington State Apprenticeship Program. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in the next webinar next month. Uh, I also have a guest speaker who's going to be talking about that topic as well. And then there's going to be more planned for next year as well. Uh, if you want to catch up on the previous webinars, these are a couple of the topics that uh, we, we talk about. As I mentioned, hiring tech talent was one of it uh, last month. And then we also had a topic around virtual reality uh, and also what, it, uh, what 5G meant for people in terms of their careers and so forth. So, you know, if you have time and if you're interested, feel free to visit our site and uh, you can listen to the on-demand um, webinars that we have recorded. Okay. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce um, our guest speaker today. Uh, we have Ray Farner, uh, as well as, as Don Milgate, um, talking about digital photography in terms of what it means to go pro. Um, so let me get up from here and then have uh, our speakers introduce themselves. Okay. Don uh, and um, Ray, um, would you like to introduce yourselves to the audience here? Absolutely. Don, do you want to go alphabetically? Should I let you go first? <laughs> sure, that's fine. All right. Um, my name is Don Milgate. I um, am a commercial photographer in Seattle. I've been uh, working in this field for 40 years and uh, about uh, 10 or let's see how no 20 or so years ago it, uh, it went from uh, film to digital photography it was a big changeover for everybody who uh, uh, was in the had been in the field uh, because the digital uh, really made things change a lot and it's actually changed the business a lot too um, I started out in a uh, working in a photo studio as an assistant, and I worked there for six years. And another photographer who worked there also, he and I uh, branched off and started our own studio uh, in downtown Seattle. And I, I've actually been in four different uh, spaces over the years. Uh, when we switched over from uh, film to digital, there was quite a lot of learning curve for everyone because it, it was pretty new for everyone involved. But uh, it uh, seems that things have now um, kind of leveled off, at least they have for at least the last 10 years or so. And uh, that is uh, pretty much all about me. I did, I have worked off and on at different photo studios besides my own. Uh, as a photographer for Studio N, which is Nordstrom Studio in town. And I've shot for them in Amazon and um, used to go on location for many years for Al L. Bean. I've also photographed for Eddie Bauer and Nordstrom. Um, I've lately been doing more uh, in the area of uh, portraiture and uh, 
things of that nature. Because the things have changed so much that most companies now uh, have their own in-house studios and don't hire freelancers that have their own studios so much. So there you go. That's about me. <laughs> Great. Ray. Thanks, Don. Ray? Thanks. Thanks, Don. Don and I are in very different parts of photography, and I think that's half the fun today. Um, my background started um, in nature photography and scientific photography, but the bulk of what I've done for the 30 plus years I've been in the photography industry has work, been to work on the business side of photography. Um, I joined a friend of mine as a partner in a stock photo agency in New York that specialized in um, science, medicine, and natural history. And then I went on to California to join an agency that represented five National Geographic photographers. And then those of you that are up here in the area, and by the way, I recognize a number of names in the room. It's great to see you in here. Um, then I moved on to Art Wolf and I worked with him, a nature and wildlife photographer here in Seattle. But all through it, I've worked on the business side. Um, ended up working with Art, negotiating book contracts, editing his books, um, also working in magazine stories, marketing them, assembling them and marketing them worldwide. And then in 2001, I went off on my own, totally freelance. And now I've got as many irons in the fire as I can manage. Um, if you asked what I do primarily today, I would say education. I've been teaching with Bellevue College for the last 14 years. And now I'm teaching with UW um, in both of the certificate programs at both schools. And then I teach for almost anyone else who will have me. Um, and I also lead photo tours to China, Cuba, and Europe, occasionally Canada. So for me, it's about as many irons in the fire, but I'm really coming at it from the business side, um, primarily managing other people's photographs. And it's an honor to be here today. Thank you. Thank you both for that introduction. Um, let me ask you uh, in terms of where you're seeing the uh, industry is going, right? Now, a lot of people think that, hey, I can get a digital camera, right? I can start shooting and I'm going to be a pro, right? But uh, I think one of the key things in having you both here is to share with the audience what that continuum looks like in the, in the photography industry, because there's more than just shooting a shot, right? There's, there's all the aspects of the business, front end and back end. What I mean in front of the camera, behind the camera, that a lot of people don't know about. Um, can you both talk a little bit about that? Don, do you want to start? I keep deferring, but... <laughs> Let's go alphabetical order. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no. it's cleaner. It's cleaner. <laughs> sure. Uh, the, a little bit about the business end. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, and, uh, yeah exactly. Well, the business end works a lot like any other small business. In my, in, as far as I'm concerned, I work with... Uh, I do all my own... Nowadays, I do all my own... Um, bookkeeping and things like that. And I use QuickBooks to handle all of my uh, billings and everything like that. I, I um, use, uh, I advertise myself. I have a website and I um, constantly, and I'm uh, constantly communicating with people on uh, I'm there uh, uh, online and with other things, but most of the people I work with are commercial, you know, commercial and so I shoot for companies that need photography for sell for selling and um, you wouldn't be able to just necessarily pick up a camera, a digital camera and start doing that, although it's become much easier with mm -hmm. uh, digital photography, but there's a lot of involved in lighting and uh, what is expected and uh, merchandise, what they need to see when you're shooting it to sell and uh, things like that. So um, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Ray, what's your thought on that? It makes sense. Um, there have been tremendous changes in the industry to be sure. Um, you may have heard from, I hope everybody's familiar with what we call stock photography. Um, there are many people today that say stock photography is finished, dead, over. And that's simply not true. It's just changed. You know, I'll go back a few years and give you an example. Um, there was a time when any photographer who did stock, and if you're not familiar with it, it means pre-existing photography. It's basically being rented to third parties. 
So it's pre-existing. It's not commissioned. It's not creating on assignment. And there was a time when assignment photography, for example, for magazines, appeared to be killed by stock. And in the beginning, stock photographers actually used a pseudonym. So they wouldn't be accused of doing stock because stock was viewed as a villain that killed assignment. Well, over time, we got into all variations of stock that appeared to kill stock. And now, in my opinion, some assignment is coming back. So mm -hmm. it is a continuum. There are constant changes. And I really think it's so important to have, again, many irons in the fire, even for a full-time pro um, studio photographer like Don, who's been branching out. I know we know each other quite well. And getting into portraits, even pet portraits looking for where the market is and being flexible and nimble. And a lot of knowing that means eyes wide open, always doing research, always talking to people, networking. There are organizations like the American Society of Media Photographers um, with local chapters. There's the North American Nature Photography Association. I'm very involved with NAPA, the Nature Photography Association. That helps us ramp up our knowledge of what's going on so we can be nimble and make those changes. And I've had people in nature photography, which is very different from what Don does, say to me, you're not teaching your students to go full time. You couldn't be, that's crazy. And to an extent it is um, in nature photography is another, not an outlier, but another piece of the whole spectrum continuum. Um, very rarely do you go full time. You'll have a mix going on. And if you are full time in quotes, you're going to have that many irons in the fire. You're going to be doing some stock. You're going to be doing some assignment, maybe very local work. You're going to be making merchandise, lots of angles to play out. So it's, it's not, um, it's amorphous. You know, it's a lot of variety. Everybody has a different approach and being freelance. It just means eyes wide open research um, marketing, but it doesn't have to be hiring, hiring someone to be marketing, just looking out there for what's going on and being aware. Great. Thank you for that. Um, so you, we heard you both talk about, you know, freelancing, right? Working on assignments for um, projects and all that. What's the perspective? What, what's your perspective in terms of people who want to go to the corporate world? Are there opportunities there today? Is there, you know, like in the past, right? You have photojournalists, people who go out and take photos for magazines and all that, right? Um, what, what's your perspective on, on, you know, the corporate world versus the uh, private side of things? John? Yeah, we'll stay alphabetical. <laughs> well, there are, um, there are quite a few opportunities uh, outside pretty much what I do. Uh, doing commercial work, uh, although there are still opportunities for what I do. Um, a lot of uh, photo studios, uh, big, big companies, like I've said before, have photo studios uh, in town here. Nordstrom has a big photo studio and uh, uh, Tommy Bahama has a photo studio, a lot of different companies. So you could get a job, uh, one of those working as a photographer or a, as, as a Digitech, which is also a, a very sought after position right now. And a Digitech basically just uh, works on and manages the images as they come into the computer from the photographer. Uh, other ways you could go are uh, being a wedding photographer, which is uh, quite a bit easier to get into. You do need to get a portfolio together and, and uh, to put on your website, you're not gonna get many uh, you're not going to get many clients without a, a nice website and some good images. So that's the difficult part of that is just going out and getting some uh, images to sell that way. You can also do portraits, which I, I've been doing more of. And uh, that's because uh, many people need portraits for headshots and for uh, I've been doing them for some album covers too and things like that. So uh, I would say that right now, the, the one thing that you could depend on more than anything would be to do wedding photography. Uh, but what I do is still something you could find work in, uh, in a photo studio. Uh, starting your own photo studio would be very expensive and, uh, and not necessarily pay off so well. Uh, having my own studio is a good thing. It's a, it's a 
good thing because a lot of clients are just happy to have a place to go and shoot and you don't have to organize and rent a studio and then get the photographer and all the other people you work with. So anyway, that's um, that's that, I guess. I hope that answers your question. Sure. Right. Yeah, I, I would add that, um, like I said earlier with stock, there are cycles, there are changes you have to be aware of. And I've always found it in, interesting. I used to have a career with the government as well with the Environmental Protection Agency. And I realized I'd been there a long time when I saw these cycles, you know, an administration comes in and this is happening at places like Eddie Bauer and Nordstrom, the 27 years I've been in Seattle, I've watched this happen. They, um, someone comes in with this bright idea, let's move all the photography in house, build our own studio, save money and maximize control. The government used to do the same thing. New administration, new person comes in with a bright idea. Let's farm it all out. Why are we maintaining this studio, trying to keep people busy when we don't have enough work? And I've seen that cycle in 27 years already repeat itself three or four times at some of the companies. And I watched that with the US EPA as well. This bright idea of let's farm it out. No, let's bring it back in. So you have to be aware of what's going on. And again, be kind of nimble and see where the trend is at this moment. Um, right now, Nordstrom, for example, has its own studio. And I was talking with Don earlier on a prep Zoom and he and his wife, his wife, my wife and Don have worked together in the studio. They reminded me that Nordstrom not only had consolidated that studio, but they're moving it out of the area to the Midwest where it's cheaper. You know, everybody's always looking to save money and finding alternatives. So you have to be ready for that. Um, the same with stock. You know, I'm represented by Getty Images. So now while I'm talking to you, if I listen very carefully, I can hear the cash register. I'm making money because they're selling for me. So that's passive income. It means I have to be aggressive, get my work with them. Mm -hmm. But once you do that, you can be multitasking and your work is still selling on stock. Um, again, this idea of many irons in the fire, different streams of income, and yeah. some will increase and some will decrease. So the more you have going, the more you can manage, mm -hmm. the more you can have a steady income. That's interesting. It, it almost reminds me of retirement in ethics, right? That you need to have in your retirement nest, a bunch of different eggs in it, in the basket, because in any industry, I think, right? Because it's changing, constantly changing, that you can't put all your eggs in just one, but you have different ones, right? That you can invest in. So I think that's interesting. Um, in terms of where you're seeing the industry going forward in the future, um, what are your thoughts around this? I, I'm thinking, right? We, 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 when we see movies these days, you, just talking about video, right? That now we have uh, drone, using drones to film things, right? Uh, things that people don't do in the past, but now the technology allows you to do it. You're seeing uh, drones being used for um, capturing, you know, movie shots and all that kind of thing. With photography, are you seeing some of those things? Uh, what, what, what kind of new development that our audience should be thinking about as they think about Photography as a career. John? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> but Ray, Ray has uh, some pretty good pointers on that. Just having just having a, a variety of um, different skills that you uh, work on and uh, processes. Um, I don't really notice a, a huge um, change happening right now in the business. I, I think uh, things have kind of uh, leveled off a little bit about as far as uh, at least I'm talking from my side of it, but uh, the corporate corporations to have side of their own studios and, and, uh, and they're, um, they seem to always be hiring. Um, in, in what I do, the uh, people that work with me on crews that I work on, say stylists and, uh, digital techs and then retouch people. Those are the three people I work with the most. They seem to be uh, very busy because they tend to be more freelance than photographers these days. Photographers usually work uh, in-house for the, for the different companies that they are working at. But these other people work freelance. I know that the Digitech I use, she's, she's constantly working. It's sometimes I have to get her online months before the shoot just to make sure I have her available. So 
if you're interested in the other aspects of photography besides just the, taking the pictures, those are uh, really good things to get into, particularly if you enjoy working with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And uh, Capture One is a, is a program that I use constantly, and they, are, they always know about Capture One pretty well too, and Lightroom. Those three uh, things are very helpful um, in that. So, I, But otherwise, I haven't really noticed in the past maybe 10 years a huge change in what's going on. Ray, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, one trend I've seen that again I'm throwing out some specifics that should be illustrative of you know eyes wide open, keep your skill set up, watch what's going on. Um, quite a few of the my acquaintances have gone into what's called corporate stock, and they'll cut a deal with one corporation, and they will photograph it ad nauseum, and mm -hmm. in for a payment make that stock available just to the corporation. So they can use it like an in-house library. Mm -hmm. And then they have rights, if they negotiate well, to go sell that on the outside as well, not proprietary, but the more generic shots to make a passive income through stock. Mm -hmm. So it's been an interesting wedding of a corporation and a photographer that you could never get that access otherwise, unless you were there on assignment. And that would be, you'd be in and out. You know, you do one assignment and that's it. But this is more lasting. So I found that intriguing as a variation on the stock that some photographers will tell you is dead because there were photographers that used to easily make six figures on stock. And those days are gone because there's so much competition, but right. it's not over. It just yeah. means diversifying and finding maybe more stock agencies. And yeah. I wanted to build on what Don said. Um, it's very important to remember that ph photography is not monolithic. Um, just in a studio shoot, there are eight, nine, 10 different roles being filled, all related to photography, but they're not Don pressing the shutter for the final photograph. They're the producer, the stylist. And you know, my wife is a product stylist. She specializes in um, still product, not fashion, not on body, but she won't do food photography mostly because that's a specialty. And then you have a producer. You have the Digitech that Don was talking about who you, I don't think anybody worth their salt would do a studio shoot without them. And their skill set is not photography. It's Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop or all of them. And um, the same thing, you have people working at magazines that are not photographers. Maybe they have a bent toward it or did it once, but they're buying photography for the magazine. Not necessarily assignments, but stock from individuals or agencies. Mm -hmm. And they're called, um, picture editors or photo editors. And then you have people working at the stock agencies that are not photographers. They are amassing and processing the stock to get it out digitally so it can be bought. So it's really a team sport with many angles that you can play without being the photographer. Please remember that. That's interesting. Thank you both. Um, talking about, you know, um, private corporate libraries, right? For, uh, for photos and all that. I'm reminded of a friend who operates um, a um, commercial signage business and they use a lot of photos, right? For a lot of the backgrounds in terms of, you know, what people want and sometimes brochures and all those things. Uh, I suspect they probably subscribe to one of these libraries as well, but they, because they're small, they probably don't have a, um, a private library of their own, but I, I suspect big companies around here probably would want that, right? They wouldn't want to have a photo that they use is used by other people as well because it's a stock photo, right? They want it to be unique only to their marketing materials. And I think that may be something of interest to our audience here, which is to reach out to them and say, hey, let me work for you, right? Uh, to create Absolutely. your private library of things. So I think that's interesting. And Ray, you're very astute on that. You know, the other side of it is there are hundreds of stock photo agencies and some of them have a very low threshold to join. Um, you know, one would be alamy.com and it's an income stream. Mm -hmm. And the more you feed them, the more potential income and the smarter you shoot for them, the more potential income. And that's open to anyone in the room. You don't have to be, you know, a high powered pro with years of experience. Alamy is open to anyone. You just have to look at what they require. And I love them because you apply to them. You don't just enter. So there's quality control. And if you provide what they need and they think they can sell your work, you can join them and that's passive income. So there are lots of um, possibilities and they're not 
in and of themselves perhaps totally lucrative where they could be your career, but they could be done on top of another job, including mm -hmm. another photography job. Thank you. Sure. Um, so let's shift gears a little bit. So we talk a little about a, li a little bit about the industry, right? In terms of the shifts and everything that's going on. Let me ask you both a little bit about uh, your personal side. So you've been in the industry quite a bit now uh, in terms of experience and years. Um, tell us, you know, what do you consider as a, your secret sauce, right? That, that you've learned and gained throughout your years that you think people may be interested to learn about it, right? So is that something that, that you did unique that made you stay on uh, what you've been doing for this period of time? Uh, is that something that you think, you know, that that's unique to you, right? That people should think about what makes you passionate, but also at the same time, uh, qualities that people look for in a photographer, a professional photographer. Don? Well, I can tell you that, <laughs> I can tell you that um, a lot of the things that I hear feedback I get from people that I work with, um, they uh, like working with someone who doesn't get uptight. A lot of photographers tend to get very nervous or uh, <laughs> anxious during a photo shoot. And I like to, I'm a very much a team member. I really uh, enjoy making the uh, entire crew that I work with, all of us a team. We're all on, a, on the same team, working for the same um, goals. And um, and the, the fact that I'm always open to new ideas, a lot of my art directors that I work with are very happy to the fact that they can uh, come up with an idea and we can uh, play around with it. I, can, I don't just immediately say, no way, I can't do that. Right. Or we're not going to do that. But um, so I think in my personal opinion, it has to do a lot with just being a team player and getting a, along with everybody and making sure that everybody is involved in the process, which it's, it really is a, everybody that's working together uh, on, on each project I do. I feel like they're a very important part of the project, and uh, like to like everybody to be included in uh, in in, the, in that. So, um, I also have a lot of experience in lighting, um, which really makes things uh, a lot easier because we can move through the shoot quicker when when you know exactly how to light something. Mm -hmm. It makes that go faster, and uh, and and look better in the end. So, um, mm -hmm. there's that. I think that's pretty much. Pretty much it for what uh, what I usually bring to the table in right. photo shoots. Sounds to me because it's a creative process, right? You're working with a lot of people, Correct. and everybody has opinions and ideas. So you want to make it a collaborative process, right? I think that's make it collaborative, but you don't want to shake things up either. You don't want to you you just because you don't agree with uh, some idea or doesn't mean that that isn't the way it should go because you're, you're working for someone else uh, as far as the final project goes. So you want to add your thing to that to make it come out good, even though you don't agree with the uh, original idea or so. Got it. So Ray, any thoughts on your side in terms of, you know, what makes you who you are in terms of success and all that? Sure. Um, one thing that I think I find intriguing. My wife and I are very different. She always is looking ahead, planning, you know, creating pathways. I've always felt that I kind of um, step from stone to stone as the water rises and don't have this great master plan. But what is intriguing is you get a little bit older as I am now, you look backwards and it seems like almost a straight line. Or if it's a little bit curvy, it's all connected almost like one thing was meant to be. And I think that's because one thing leads to another. For example, I've always loved nature. I ended up going into biology and then environmental management. So my photography, I shoot what I know. I know Latin names, I know taxonomy. I look at a bird and I know a lot more than just it's a blue bird. I know about its background, I know its Latin name. So I'm shooting informed and it means I can market informed you know, my work will have more standing. I do a lot in the environmental movement, environmental issues. And I know what I'm shooting because I worked for the US EPA for 10 years and New York City EPA before that. So it's building on a body of knowledge. And when I made a choice to leave the government, I was either going to go to the Caribbean 
and work for a resort for a millionaire friend of mine from New York City because I taught underwater photography there or go to work for a friend of mine who had a stock photo agency. And I knew the stock photo agency was in New York where I lived and a lot more dependable than the resort in the Caribbean. So I did the logical thing and joined the stock agency. I knew nothing about stock when I joined the agency. My partner took a chance on me. Um, I trained on the job and before I knew it, I was negotiating pricing with the biggest ad agencies in the world and loved it even more than maybe doing my own photography, although my own photography was represented by the agency. And mm -hmm. literally one thing led to another, that whole route, you know, knowing my biology kept me in nature photography, led me to Art Wolf. I'd never negotiated a book contract, but I built on what I had learned before, you know, including in environmental management. So one thing led to another. So it's this idea of, you know, being professional, um, Eyes wide open, lots of research, combining things and being open to new ideas like Don said, and working with teams and being professional and networking. Ray, it's good to know that your biology uh, education wasn't put to waste then. Absolutely not. <laughs> More important today than it was when I was younger. Right. But I think I think that's a key thing, right? I'm so what I'm hearing from you both is that leverage whatever experiences or background that you have and apply that to photography, right? If that's the path that you're choosing to go to, right? Um, and then the other thing is, it's a collaborative process, right? You got to work with people, right? It's, yes, you take photos, it can be an individual uh, experience, but it's about working with people too, right? In general, uh, if you're taking, you're, if you're working with the, the Digitech folks, as you say, or your clients or whoever that is, right? So that's the aspect of what I call hard skills, right? The photo photography techniques and all those things. And there's also the soft skills, right? That you have to have because you're gonna be interacting with people, working with people in general, right? That's what I'm hearing in general, uh, as, as a, the kind of things I'm hearing from you both. Um, let me ask you next about, uh, I think you both have something to share with the audience. Uh, is that right? Correct. Okay. So who wants to go first? Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's stay alphabetical. It's so friendly. All right. Oh, no, you have okay, the, uh, let's, let's see if I can do this. All right. Okay. <laughs> Hold on a second here. Yep. You know, photography is not photography until you show something, right? That's right. Let's see now, just uh one yeah, second I, here. I can see your, uh, is that... <laughs> it's showing you know, up up there, right? I, just I got need, it. Mm -hmm. Just need to figure out, figure out how I go full screen on this. I think right there. Maybe. So, oh yeah. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a quick uh, run through of some of the things I've done and, uh, and how, how I've done, where I've done these as far as, um, Oh, uh, just just kind of a general background. So this is just a studio. I'll just go through them really quick. This is a studio shot. I, I shoot for a lot of some whiskey companies in town. And I also did this for a winery. Um, we uh, did this as a multiple photo with, a, it just took a lot of uh, work from a lot of people, collaborative uh, work because it had to be a uh, Photoshop together. Uh, you can do uh, photos like these. These are just these are just website photos. Also locally, we do some uh, weed photography and uh, another whiskey shot. This is a brand new shot. I just did it uh, for Kraken whiskey. Let's see, let's just check one thing here. Can I get this to go? Yeah, there we go. Uh, this was a shot on location quite some time ago in uh, California. Uh, also shot on location in Maine. This was shot uh, just in the hallway of my studio that I used to be in. Ooh. Now I've, lately I've been doing some more portraiture. So this was a family shot, another family portrait, single shot, 
a portrait out. That was an indoor portrait, studio portrait. This is an outdoor portrait. This is my son who works in the boating industry. So I said, let's do a shot at Chill Show. Uh, album covers, mm -hmm. front and back. The back cover was actually my idea. So it got added in. Nobody ever, nobody ever usually listens to the photographer when they give, when you throw out your, your ideas, but this time it actually happened. So uh, I've done posters. That was a fun shoot. I've done uh, shoots for this was for a bar downtown. Mm -hmm. I do food now too. I haven't I haven't done that for years. So this is just packaging shots for food. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a few weddings. Uh, this was for fun, just goofing around in my studio, which is nice. Which is a nice thing about having a studio when you're not busy, you can play around. This is uh, the current studio I'm in. Uh, this was the studio I had before this, and there's me in there. Um, this was in the Bemis building, if you're familiar with that. And this was another studio I had down on Fourth Avenue. My uh, partner shooting for, this was for Tommy Bahama, uh, shooting on figure. This is on location in uh, Chile. I'm shooting with uh, a crew here. I've got the stylist next to me and the Digitech and then the photo assistant. Mm. We're doing a thing that I uh, call uh, subtractive lighting. Uh, we didn't really have much in the way of lighting that day because it was overcast and raining. So I use a black to actually give the lighting some direction. A little, little hint there. A clue. Uh, here's a photo crew uh, shooting on location in Maine. Uh, they're shooting a model who was off off the image here, but this is the whole crew working on that, just to give you an idea. This was a shot of my assistant <laughs> was holding my head camera to keep it from going overboard <laughs> while I was shooting. This was one of my partner's uh, cards. He made a series of uh, cards to uh, market himself. And uh, this was just one of them. It showed that he could do um, still life and fashion photography. That's uh, that's it. Very nice. Thank you for sharing, Don. I uh, I was just uh, remembering the one with the family portrait. The, the, I think it was a grandpa, right, with the baseball yes. camera. You know, uh, acting almost like a rap star or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of the that was kind of the theme. They had a theme going there. So. <laughs> exactly. It was it was interesting. It was based Ray, on a uh, it was based on a rap cover. I can't remember which one exactly. Oh, okay. So I know, and they brought me that cover. They said, "Hey, can we make it look like this?" And I said, "Sure." Oh, okay. All right, that's cool. Ray, uh, I'm sure you have uh, some interesting uh, things to share as well. Yeah, I have a share that's going to be very different. If you want to see my work, I just say go to rayfortner.com. Um, I don't have any of my own photos to share, but I'll show you a, a bit of my philosophy and some pointers I'd like to throw out to you. And I wanted to commend Don, um, there's never enough whimsy or humor in photography. We get way too serious, whether it's in a studio or out nature shooting. So it's good to see some whimsy and whimsy does sell. <laughs> Let me go up to my PowerPoint and I'll keep it fairly short because I know we want to handle question. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of my coming from the business side, a couple of things to think about. One is you, your copyright is what it's all about. Um, when Don is shooting, some things are proprietary. Obviously, if it's a product, he's not going to run around and sell that as stock. But I think someone that's doing a good job of photographing pets or people, even mm -hmm. weddings, will work hard to make sure they protect their copyright and they can sell that work in more ways than one. Not just be paid for the commission, but actually use it potentially as stock. So you can have different income streams coming in. I think that's a prime example. And the thing to remember is your copyright is not a single right. It's the right to make a calendar from your work um, or use it in a calendar, the right to use it in a magazine, the right to use it on wrapping paper. It's anything you can imagine. Your copyright has all these pencils in the bundle and you can rent them out. So I think about circles of the business of photography with income options. 
And the arrangement could be variable. That's why I haven't made them concentric circles. The sizes are different according to the moment, your skill set, what you decide to push. And remember, you want to do what you love, not just what you have to do. You know, if it's all about what you have to do, maybe you're in the wrong career. But I look at the three main areas of photography as services, merchandise, and licensing. And services, I'm thinking of very often what Don is doing, and I'll explain it on the next slide a little bit more, um, where you can do it for a corporation in-house, or you can work through a rep and do it independently. Merchandise is where you're making things out of your photography. For example, the print on the wall behind me was made as a commission piece to be sold here on Vashon. And I do have done a lot of art shows pre-pandemic times when it made sense, when we could get a big enough audience. I show my work a lot for fine art. And when you do merchandise, you can do direct sales or you can find a showing partner. And for some of you that may not be thinking about a, a high powered uh, sole proprietor or corporate studio, um, you can be working through a cafe to show your work or potentially a gallery, although galleries don't work very well for photographers. They don't even work very well for painters. Um, and you can always go online or you can do brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And then licensing I'll talk about in a second, which is where you don't make the merchandise. You rent it to someone else who takes all the risk, makes the merchandise, and they pay you up front for it normally, and or you get a royalty, and you continue getting money over time. So with commercial, which is what Don does so well, um, it's studio and location. It could be product, and he said on body, which is considered front, um, fashion. But there are also the whole area of commissions, and Don made a good point earlier of saying that's a low threshold to get into, where you could do portraits. Um, I know many people that have a lucrative business doing senior portraits in schools, and obviously they're not done in school anymore. They're always done out and around on a favorite location. But I know other people that specialize in newborn photography. They link up with hospitals, or as Don is doing, families. Or I think of a big area with potential is to get into pet photography. If you like animals anyway, people are putting a tremendous money into getting their pets photographed, particularly people that have no children and the pets are their children. And then there's always headshots and company branding where you might go to a realtor locally and photograph all the realtors for that company. And Don mentioned earlier weddings and don't forget events, you know, documenting something that's going on in a theater. And it could be local. I always think of starting close to home. And it's something that's forgotten very often and it has diminished some, but it's not gone. Working in the editorial side, newspapers and magazines. Newspapers have dried up a lot, but they haven't gone away. Magazines certainly have not gone away. And more and more magazines are not looking for high powered, well-known photographers to do assignments. They're looking for people that can deliver that have, as Don said, a portfolio that shows what they can do. Um, and then we talked about corporate freelance and in-house. So some of this is sort of a recap for me, but there's something else. Number four is something not to lose track of. Read it for a second and think about what I mean. The other art mediums, painting, drawing, even ceramics, carving, are realizing that we live in a digital age they're more and more getting smart and saying the original is not where the money is. Just like with us, the original is not in photographing the pet. It could potentially be in reselling that work over our lifetime. So I'm finding the smarter artists out there, the non-photography artists, want to get their work photographed and photographed well. Now, is it lucrative? It's another iron in the fire. If you do it right and minimize your contact and potentially wasted time, meeting with the artists. Um, you can be photographing their artwork and get it very formulaic where you can get your lighting set up, your camera set up and shoot it for money at three in the morning. There's a photographer in Kirkland who never meets his customer. He has them drop their originals off at a frame shop. He picks them up and a week later, he drops off the flash drive or DVD of the results and they pay the frame shop with a check and they leave with their digital version of the artwork and they then can sell it. In fact, you've probably begun to see this. We're in a new world where I think non-photographic artists 
are competing with us head on. Look at magazine covers, travel magazines, travel brochures, non-photographic artwork is beginning to take over and move in. Another reason we have to reinvent. And then don't forget the other iron in the fire, which has really become my main, which is teaching. I love the teaching and instruction. That's really what I spend the bulk of my time on now, and it's all related to photography. And that could be locally, schools, um, because of the pandemic and Zooming. It could be international. I have students now from all over the world in my programs. And then as we get out of the pandemic, more and more, hopefully, photo tours. So I, I won't belabor the merchandise area, but um, get this. I know a photographer in Sacramento who focuses on greeting cards, and he doesn't even print them. He mounts his artwork on the greeting card, fair amount of handwork. He grosses 20000 a year. He showed us on a whiteboard. Now, if he wanted to work a little bit harder, he could gross 40000 a year just on greeting cards, a reuse of his copyright, of his material. And you can now self-publish books. You don't have to work with Random House or Harcourt Grace. You can work with Blur. Sell your own books and now Amazon is handling self published books. So photography books that used to be out of reach for everyone because they've never sold well and they're expensive to print are now within reach. So you can do your own. And places like Etsy and Zazzle you can sell online, another income stream. And they're not without competition, but you have to separate yourself from the pack and push people toward Etsy, which would be an online store. Um, I have many photographer friends that are on Fine Art America, and they're selling four, five, six prints a week, and they don't have to print them or frame them or mail them. They pay a commission, which is a very common structure in the business of photography. Fine Art America collects a commission and they do all the fulfillment. You just have to get your work planted with them. And then last but not least, licensing, which think of as renting your work. Some of you may be aware of it, some not. You can do it directly, even as something as simple as getting your work up on Flickr. I have many students that are selling their work because of Flickr, not through Flickr, because people search Flickr. Rosario Resort, every Monday morning, used to search sites like Flickr under the keyword Rosario Resort to see if anybody posted good work taken at the resort that weekend. And then they would contact you. And if you were smart, you cut a deal and got paid. You didn't give it away. I mentioned before, Alamy, Shutterstock, Adobe, they're all open to anyone in the room. And then you can work through agencies. Um, exactly like what I said, Adobe, Alamy, and Shutterstock. But down below are magazines that now are looking for work, good work. They're not assigning very often. Connie Nass Traveler would rather get work from Tahiti that they don't have to fly a crew to Tahiti. Um, Brown Trout, the best calendar company in the world for photographic calendars, they are looking for work. You can approach them. And it's not, it doesn't happen in a heartbeat. You have to approach them and be professional and do follow through. Avanti is a great greeting card company that uses only photography and highly um, edited photography now. They don't like straight photography. And then a variation is greeting card universe like Fine Art, Fine Art America. You put your work with them and they sell your work for you and make a commission. So last but not least, my last slide, um, building on what Don and I have been talking about. When I look at photography, I do think of it as a team sport. And not so much nature photography, which is often a solo undertaking. In the world of most other photography, these are all options for careers, part-time or full-time, without being the person that's pressing the shutter. So there's a lot of possibilities. And we've mentioned a lot of these earlier. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks, Don and, um, and uh, Ray. Um, we have about... Pleasure. 10 minutes or so. Um, so let's open up the Q&A. Uh, I see a question in the chat. So I'll do that first. And um, we can then have um, the audience pretty much ask any questions they would like of the audience here, of the uh, presenters here. The first question to you both is, can you please recommend one to two cameras that would be a good consideration as a starter for professional camera? Uh, a good quality camera that is respectively affordable for someone who is thinking about getting into photography more seriously. So somebody who's looking to get in, right? 
become a pro, what would you both recommend as a good one to, to begin with? Well, I'm not uh, too knowledgeable about the camera world. Uh, I know what I use, I use Canons and I, uh, recommend, I recommend, I use a Canon 5D, which is a great camera. I don't know if there's anything. Uh, 5D is a digital on. SLR, is that right? Don? Digital SLR, correct. And now, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, mirrorless cameras are very popular mm. uh, digital cameras, but they're quite a bit more expensive too. And yeah. uh, in my case, if I went to switch to one of those, I'd have to uh, either buy all new lenses or uh, <laughs> use, use a converter. So the lenses can actually be the more expensive part of the program. And uh, you could possibly consider buying something like a Canon Rebel, which is more of an entry level digital camera. They're good cameras. And then uh, put your money into the lenses, which to me make more sense. The lenses are important. So, Thank you. All right. I understand. Yeah, it's a tricky question because of course it depends on what you're shooting. You know, people doing travel are going to want lighter, more compact, um, more easily. Um, transported equipment, someone doing studio will have a different option. I know that um, I've been a Nikon shooter, I'm now a Canon shooter, and I'm about to probably jump ship from both systems, but my next camera is definitely going to be mirrorless. Um, all the R&D of these big companies is going into mirrorless. Uh, in my opinion, and Don could correct me if he feels otherwise, I also have a <laughs> Canon 5D, a Mark III that I use a lot for my nature and environmental shooting. But um, I will not buy another DSLR. I think it won't be long before they are dinosaurs. Maybe they already are and they will go away. I think point and shoots are going away. And I think the world of photography is gravitating toward phone cameras, which are getting better and better and better. They're mm -hmm. shooting full length motion pictures for the big screen on phone cameras and mirrorless. All the R&D money is going into mirrorless and I'm leaning towards Sony. Um, I have a couple co-teachers that love Fuji and um, the Nikon is getting great reviews and the Canon. So, but if my advice would be consider mirrorless, I mean, the Digital Rebel is a great camera, but it is a dinosaur. Um, I would say buy new or buy used from a reputable company like MPB or um, I'm trying to think of the other one. MPB has come highly recommended. There are a couple camera stores in the Southeast that specialize in used gear which is sort of I think BH sells some used queer. BH has some used, but there are a couple like MBT, KEH, KEH okay. and MPP specialize in used equipment and it's certified and it would be cheaper. But I agree with Don. The box is important. The lens is the key. You've got to buy good lenses. And that could mean a Tamron. In nature shooting right now, there is a Tamron that's better than almost any Nikon or Canon lens out there. But I go to a place called DP Review, digitalphotoreview.com, which is my be all and end all, get your recommendation, find out if there's a problem with the equipment before I click the button and buy, or go into Glazers or Kenmore locally and buy. I Me always do that. DPReview.com. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one to use. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the go to, huh? Absolutely. Um, and what about, so I'll ask a question. Um, what about, networking opportunities. So I think you both talk about different trade association, you know, like Napa, right? Ray was talking about Napa as one. Um, you know, for somebody who's trying to network, right? Because this is where the connection happens, right? What would you recommend as the one to, to go first with before you think about others? Well, that's a good, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not really sure. There used to be the uh, AM, ASMP, but I don't know if that's going to get you any work to join them. They're helpful as far as uh, getting ideas and things like that. But uh, can you think of anything, Ray? I... I think ASMP is good. It's not for everyone. You know, if you're a nature photographer, it, it wouldn't be um, unwise to look at ASMP because sometimes um, in nature photography, I find people get way too ingrown. And we really need to reach out and see what the world at large is doing because nature photography is big, particularly with amateurs, but it's not the main type of photography. It's one of many. So you really want to look around mm -hmm. um, for nature photography without any consideration. I would say it's, it's definitely Napa, the North American Nature Photography Association. But there's also the Northwest um, 
what is it, Association of Nature Photography. I might have it slightly wrong. It's a new group I learned of recently that's been up here for a long time and I totally miss them. Mm -hmm. um, so you wanna just be snooping around and camera clubs are not a bad place to start. And you know, a lot of this networking, it may not, I agree with Don, it may not lead to work because your, your competitors are there, but it sure helps with things like business practices, pricing. It's great to get to know other photographers that you can contact to get help with pricing. And I guarantee you, if you call me about a pricing question, I can't help with studio photography, but if it's something about stock, I will help you because I want you to be in my ballpark. I don't want you underbidding me. I don't want you killing yourself with a price that's crazy high. I teach my students this all the time. And you know, you can call five photographers and two won't help you. Move on, call another, the third or fourth will help you. The more secure ones will help you. And it's this whole idea of researching, you know, and sharing information. And the meetings don't price fix. We have to be very careful. You know, they won't have a heavy duty program on pricing, but you can chat with your fellow members. And some of these groups, you don't have to join. You can just attend meetings. And I know a ASMP has not been as active as it used to be. Napa is still very active. And for those in the room, I know there are a few of you that are nature photographers. They're doing their next conference one last time, perhaps virtual. And by going to it March 5th, 2022, you will save over $1,000. No airfare, no room and board, and get all the perks of all the information. And many of the breakouts are going to be all about business. It's so powerful. Network. Great. Thank you. We got two minutes left, and I have two questions. Uh, we'll go to the last one first. What's the. Um, well, actually, there's another question that just came in, but I'll ask the question about uh, lawyers for contracts and copyright. Do you folks rely on um, what kind of resources for that? You know, to deal with you know agreements, contracts, and negotiating things and that kind of stuff. Well, Ray actually turned me on to a local uh, association of lawyers that helps out people in the uh, art community. What's that association called? Uh, it's called Washington Lawyers for the Arts. Right. We've actually, and we should do it again, Ray. We've had them present, you know, pre pandemic. They were out at the North Campus building presenting on occasion because they're very Seattle centric. We're trying to get them to the east side, but um, they're tremendous. They do pro bono work for the arts. And in fact, if you go to their website, just look up Washington Lawyers for the Arts, they have a um, free seminar coming up next week on your rights on the internet endorsement. Um, you know, and copyright, I would definitely go to that program. It's absolutely free. It's going to be one hour. They tend to do it like these over lunch. Um, great group to go for. There's also no. a fabulous book called the um, ASMP, American Society of Media, Media Photographers, Business Practices in Photography. And it has all the basic, uh, looks like Don's got it handy. It's got extra just, model releases. I'm just going to show you the uh, or something else. But no, there are anyway. some great books out there. I don't tend to hire a lawyer, um, but I am a sole proprietor. I try to be careful. But mm. you know, even something like model releases, if you network, you'll find out Getty Images has 21 different tight as a drum um, model releases that you can download for free in different languages. So if you go to France, you can take a Getty release to France. And if it's good enough for Getty, it's good enough for anybody in the room. I do want to mention that none of us here are lawyers. So, um, you know, any legal advice is just for information purposes, right? So feel free to check out that legal uh, resource that uh, Ray talked about. Uh, They're very good. Very good. Very great. highly recommended. Yeah, and Ray, are... let me add, I know it's close to the end, but Washington Lawyers for the Arts is also doing a one week every month, totally free. You can book a half hour of their time to talk about an issue that's your issue. Third week of every month, you have to book by the Thursday before. I've already done it four times and saved $600 in legal fees during the pandemic. It's They weren't doing it virtual during the, before the pandemic. Huge resource, Washington Lawyers for the Arts. So I want to be respect, uh, respectful of people's time. Uh, we are exactly one-on-one right now. We'll continue if uh, everybody's okay with here, but if you have to drop off, we understand. Um, so I'm just gonna, we have two more questions left. All right, I just want to mention that. Um, questions for you both. What's the standard turnaround time frame expected for a typical shoot? 
that can be all over the place. Uh, however, because of the because mo of modern uh, the way things work nowadays and our workflow, uh, in my case, if I'm shooting for a client, I actually uh, upload the images all the day all day long while I'm shooting. They go directly to um, my touch up person and they work on the images and then they upload them all to the client directly. So usually it happens in real time as we're doing a photo shoot. But sometimes it could be, uh, it's still pretty quick turnaround though. Sometimes it could be a day or two. Ray, your thoughts? Like you, Ray. Yeah, it's, um, it's not really my area, so I can't answer it except as I've lived vicariously watching my wife work with Don and my wife on other shoots. Um, Don, I'd be curious because I know you do another piece of this and it may be part of this question. Um, how quickly does someone want their pet photograph turned around or their family portrait turned around? They're not usually too much in a hurry. In fact, uh, I'll send them uh, contacts to look at and I'll say, um, you know, take your time. And they're pretty, pretty much, they usually do. They usually will spend a week or two uh, looking at them, which is fine. I tell them there's no hurry on my end. So it, that it usually, you know, usually about a week or so, they'll uh, right. look through all of them and pick one out. So yeah, well, that's just a relief from the commercial world, right? Yeah, totally different than the commercial world. Yeah. I suspect event-based ones are going to be specific to the event, right? A wedding was going to be number of hours, pre, post, and then kind of thing, right? So you have to dedicate maybe a whole day for that or half a day or something. Right. Absolutely. Let me point something out, by the way, for those of you interested in event photography or weddings or portraits, I've had a lot of people say to me, I really don't understand how to get started. I don't know what kind of packages I have to deliver, you know, how many prints or do I turn everything over to someone? What do I charge? I'm always intrigued because all you have to do is pretend you're getting married and start looking for wedding photographers and look at what they're offering. It's online. You know, it's not a hidden thing. Stock is harder to figure out how to price, but there are actually books that tell you where to start or fellow photographers that can help. But wherever I, whenever I hear someone saying, I don't know where to start with charging for portraits, start looking, you know, it's out there. Wherever you're living, and we don't know where you all are zooming from, if you're all local or not, but wherever you live, there's gonna be portrait photographers, say doing pet photography and find out what they're offering and then tweak it. You know, maybe you don't like the package they're offering. I think anybody that turns all photographs over to someone is awfully naive and very amateurish. But that, that's out there. You couldn't do pet photography and hide your pricing structure and survive. There's so also it, it's research. Yeah, Don? Well, there's also, and I, I, I totally look, can't think of it right now, but there's also uh, um, my Digitech, she works, um, she shoots weddings on the side. And she actually just uploads hers all to a website that does everything. People go there and pick them out and then they deal with managing them and sending them like you were talking about earlier with stock photography. So she really doesn't do anything other than take the pictures and then upload them and then she's done. Yeah, and those places I understand will make books or albums. I mean, you can order yes. soup to nuts and you pay a commission, but what I've loved about stock and that's really where I cut my teeth, you know, in the very beginning, like I said earlier, when I jumped ship from the government, um, Stock is really very accessible to everybody. You know, it, it really is. And I'm, I'm losing the thought I was going to say about the, um, the books and such, but it's very accessible to everyone. You know, you can get into it. And um, I'll stop there. And then if the other thought comes back to me, sorry for that. Okay, no worries. So one last question for each book. Um, John, what's the name of the title of the book that you just showed everybody? Uh, just a second here. I don't know. Is everybody? Can everybody see that? The real business of photography. Okay, got it. Yeah. This and is then, an older ver. This is an older version. I'm sure they have a, a newer one out, but it's the, uh, it's by um, it's by the uh, ASMP. Okay, so I just put it in a chat. Uh, sorry for the typo at the end there. Um, Ray, last question to you. Uh, Corey was asking if you can share the presentation that you had shown everybody. Is I'd be possible? happy to, Ray. I, I noticed that question. I was going to address it if you hadn't. Thanks for catching it. I'm willing to do that. And I think the cleanest way for me, if you're okay with this, is drop me an email and I'll turn it around to you. Is that okay with everybody who wants it? I mean, you'll have it on the recording, of course. But if you want to drop me an email, it's just rayfortner at gmail.com. 
tell me you want the handout that you were here today or the PowerPoint, I'll send it on to you as a PDF, no problem. Got it, and I put that email in the chat Perfect. as well. Yeah, don't be um, shy about doing it, I'd be happy to share it. So, and the last one for me is this uh, shameless plug for our certificate program uh, at the Tombola Institute. So anybody who's not a student currently, but is looking to you know learn about the business of digital photography and obviously the hard skills right? and the soft skills, uh, we have a set program for digital photography for anybody interested. With that, uh, I thank you everybody for your time today. And especially to you, Don and Ray, for taking the time to talk to everybody here today. Appreciate it. Have a good thank day, everybody. You. Stay safe. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you all. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks, Ray. Well done. See you, Don. Bye. <laughs>